The Adotian scum dared to insult our fleet as pathetic, mocking the mighty Earth ships as inferior. Little did those alien shits realize that humans would make them eat those words in the most brutal way possible. Emperor Sagan's Edotian Empire had steamrolled countless star systems with its massive fleets, conquering and enslaving entire civilizations. Sagan's battle-hardened soldiers, bloated with arrogance from so many victories, openly laughed at humanity's small and outdated warships. Their derision echoed across subspace comms as more human colonies fell before ruthless Edotian invasions. On Earth, Admiral Raymond Ramos watched helplessly as the Edosian war machine consumed world after world. Outgunned and outmatched, humanity's defenses crumbled against the alien onslaught. Desperation clawed at Ramos as he stared at the star maps, each fallen colony another nail in mankind's coffin. Ramos gritted his teeth. He slammed a fist on the console, rage and determination surging through his veins. To hell with those Adosian bastards. He wouldn't let humanity fade into extinction without a fight. An insane idea crystallized in his mind. A final Hail Mary. Ramos proposed his daring plan to Earth's leaders. Rapidly construct a massive new war fleet using experimental shipbuilding techniques and technology. Scrap together resources. Cut every corner. Gamble it all on a project so audacious it might just catch the Adosians off guard. The council called Ramos crazy, insisting it would never work. Ramos roared back, spittle flying. Did they want to whimper and hide as aliens erased humanity from the stars? Or did they want to spit in Sagan's fucking face and show him what humans were made of? With the threat of extinction looming over Earth like the Reaper's scythe, the council reluctantly agreed. Every last scrap of resources was diverted to the secret project, codenamed Titan. Hidden orbital shipyards sprang up around Saturn, away from prying enemy eyes. Thousands of workers swarmed over the skeletal frames of new ships taking shape. Titans among vessels. The new Herculean-class battleships bristled with railguns, fusion missiles, and drone bays. Ramos oversaw the frenzied construction like a man possessed, hardly sleeping, never leaving the command center. He pored over every detail of the battleships, from their reactors to their mess halls. Humanity's survival depended on the Titan fleet. Failure was not an option. But then, disaster struck. An Adosian scout ship slipped past Earth's perimeter patrols and discovered one of the Titan shipyards. The jig was up. Emperor Sagan gleefully realized the humans were up to something. He dispatched his cruelest attack dog, General Zerg, to lead a battle group to Saturn. Their orders scour the system. Find out what the humans were building in secret and smash it to atoms. As the Adosian ships tore through space toward Saturn, savage smiles on their crew's faces, Ramos faced a terrible choice. The Titan fleet wasn't finished. Only half the battleships were completed. The rest still mere skeletons. Revealing the fleet now could spell humanity's doom if it couldn't match the Adosians but to continue construction risked the Adosian scouts finding and destroying the Titan Yards first, and with them, mankind's last hope. With the Adosian vanguard mere minutes from Saturn's orbit, Ramos gambled everything on a desperate ploy. Heart pounding, he stabbed down on the comm console. Titan Command, this is Admiral Ramos. The enemy is at our doorstep. I am ordering an immediate full-scale launch. Get every functional ship out there now. We win or die today. Alarm klaxons screamed as the Titan Yards burst into action. Crews sprinted to their battle stations, ready to fight to their last breaths. Unfinished ships were abandoned. Hatches to empty space sealed shut. Fifty mighty Herculean battleships, the completed half of the Titan fleet, roared out of the orbiting yards with all guns primed. Ramos gripped the arms of his command chair until his knuckles whitened, staring at the tactical display. Had he just doomed Earth? The Adosian ships sneered as the human fleet emerged to face them. They readied their weapons, hungry for slaughter and supremely confident in their technological superiority over the primitive Terrans. But then the Adosian sensors took in the sheer size and menacing silhouettes of the Titan battleships. For the first time, uncertainty flickered across General Zerg's face. These were not the puny, decrepit human ships they'd mocked and easily swatted aside before. 
In an instant, the Adotians realized the human vessels were neither pathetic nor inferior. Railgun batteries and missile pods rivaling their own bristled across the Titan hulls. The Terran ships looked meaner, tougher, and more heavily armed than anything they'd expected to find. A ferocious space battle erupted as the incomplete Titan fleet smashed head-on into the Adotian vanguard. The first powerful blows would be struck here, over the yellow-banded skies of Saturn. Railguns thundered, missiles flew, and ships died in flames. Admiral Ramos gripped his seat, knuckles white as he pitted his outnumbered battleships against Zerg's elite warriors in a desperate gamble. All of humanity held its breath, fates hanging on a razor's edge as the Titan fleet fought like ancient gods to save Earth from its would-be alien conquerors. The battle around Saturn erupted into chaos. Titan's incomplete fleet unleashed a hellish barrage against the Adotian vanguard. Railguns thundered, fusion missiles streaked across the void, and swarms of combat drones swarmed enemy vessels like angry hornets. Admiral Ramos barked orders from his command chair, his voice steady despite the pandemonium. Concentrate fire on their lead cruisers. Drone squadrons target their point defense systems. The shocked Edosians reeled from the unexpected ferocity of the human assault. Explosions blossomed across their formation as Titans' advanced weaponry tore through armor and shields. But General Zerg was no fool. He quickly regrouped his forces, bringing the full might of the Edosian battlegroup to bear. Crush these pathetic humans, he snarled over the comms. Show them the price of defiance. Edosian battlecruisers surged forward, energy weapons lashing out. Several Titan battleships vanished in blinding flashes as they were obliterated. Ramos clenched his fists as damage reports flooded in. Admiral, a communications officer called out. Urgent transmission from Dr. Ishikawa. The scientist's face appeared on screen, his eyes wild with excitement. Admiral, we've done it. We've cracked the AI problem. With this, we can... How long to implement? Ramos cut him off. Ishikawa's face fell. Hours, at least. Maybe days for full integration. Ramos cursed. They didn't have hours. They barely had minutes. Keep working. We'll buy you time. He turned to his weapons officer. Initiate Project Locust, now. The officer's eyes widened. Sir, that's still experimental. Do it! Moments later, swarms of microscopic machines burst from launch tubes across the Titan fleet. The nanites swarmed towards the Adotian ships, burrowing into hulls and wreaking havoc on systems. Ramos seized the initiative. All ships, concentrate fire on the Adosian flagship. Take that bastard Zerg out. The Titan fleet unleashed everything they had at Zerg's vessel. For a moment, it looked like they might succeed. But Zerg was too canny. He returned fire with savage precision. When the furious exchange ended, both flagships drifted crippled in space. But Zerg had survived. All ships, Ramos shouted. Make for the Kuiper Belt rally points. Go! The battered Titan fleet punched through the disorganized Edosian lines. FTL drives flared to life as they made desperate jumps. But not all made it. Ramos watched helplessly as several of his ships were caught and destroyed in the chaos of the retreat. Hours later, Ramos stood on the bridge of his crippled flagship, assessing the grim situation. Over half the Titan fleet was gone, thousands of brave souls lost, but they'd bloodied the Adotians. They'd bought time. A young officer approached, his face pale. Sir, long-range sensors are picking up a massive Edosian fleet entering the system. It's... it's led by a dreadnought. We've translated its name. They're calling it Sagan's Fist. Ramos felt ice in his veins. The Emperor himself had come. He took a deep breath, squaring his shoulders. Alert all surviving ships, he ordered. We regroup immediately. And get me Dr. Ishikawa. We need that AI yesterday. The real test was only beginning. Admiral Ramos stared at the tactical display, his fists tight as the massive Edosian dreadnought Sagan's fist entered the solar system. He thumped his hand on the console. All ships, this is Admiral Ramos. Rendezvous at Oort Cloud Base Alpha immediately. I repeat, all ships to Oort Cloud Base Alpha. The scattered remnants of the Titan fleet limped towards their hidden sanctuary, 
nestled deep in the frozen wastes of the Oort cloud. As they arrived, teams of engineers swarmed over the battered hulls, working tirelessly to repair battle damage. In a makeshift lab, Dr. Ishikawa hunched over banks of computers, sweat beating on his brow as he furiously typed line after line of code. How much longer? Ramos demanded, striding into the lab. Ishikawa didn't look up from his work. We're pushing the hardware to its limits, Admiral. The AI upgrades are incredibly complex. We need more time. Ramos cursed under his breath. We don't have more time. The Adoshans are tearing through the system as we speak. He turned to his communications officer. Get me Captain Chen. Moments later, the grizzled face of Chen appeared on screen. Sir? I need your best pilots for a special op. We're going to buy Ishikawa some time. As Ramos outlined his plan, Emperor Sagan raged aboard his flagship. Find those human vermin, he roared at General Zerg. I want their fleet obliterated. Zerg bowed low. As you command, your majesty, we've already begun systematic sweeps of the system. The humans will have nowhere to hide. Edosian warships fanned out across the solar system, methodically destroying every human outpost and colony they encountered. Plumes of fire erupted from the surfaces of moons and asteroids as the aliens relentlessly hunted their prey. But even as the Edosians closed in, Ramos's guerrilla tactics began to take their toll. Small, nimble human ships darted out of hiding, striking at Edosian supply convoys and communication relays before vanishing back into the void. Another supply ship lost in the Kuiper Belt, General, an Edosian officer reported. Zerg snarled in frustration. Divert more ships to escort duty. I want those supply lines protected at all costs. As the days wore on, the hit-and-run attacks forced the Adotians to spread their forces thin, buying precious time for the human fleet. Back at the Oort cloud base, Ishikawa burst into Ramos's command center, his eyes wild. Admiral, we've got a problem. The Adotians, they've cracked our nanite tech. They're mass-producing it. Ramos' blood ran cold. How long before they can deploy it? Days, maybe less. Ramos stood, his face grim. Then we strike now. Gather the captains. It's time to end this. Hours later, Ramos addressed the assembled fleet commanders. This is our last shot, he said, gesturing to a holographic display of Jupiter. We lure them in here. Use the planet's gravity and storms to our advantage. The main fleet hides in the radiation belts while I lead a decoy force to draw in Sagan's fist. The captains nodded grimly, understanding the stakes. As the plan unfolded, Ramos's decoy ships took a brutal pounding. A Docian weapons fire tore through hulls and vaporized crews. But they held the line, drawing Sagan's forces deeper into Jupiter's turbulent atmosphere. Now, Ramos bellowed. The rest of the Titan fleet erupted from hiding their AI systems operating in perfect harmony. They struck the Edosian fleet with devastating precision, exploiting weaknesses faster than organic minds could react. Sagan's fist reeled under the assault, its mighty hull buckling as the AI-guided Titan ships pummeled it relentlessly. Ramos saw his chance. Boarding teams, move in! Ramos led the charge onto the Edosian flagship, fighting through waves of alien defenders. They battled their way towards the command bridge, the ship shuddering and groaning around them as the battle raged. Finally, they reached the bridge. The doors hissed open, revealing Emperor Sagan himself. Ramos stepped forward, locking eyes with the alien tyrant. It's over, Sagan. With a roar of fury, Sagan lunged at the human admiral. The two leaders clashed in brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat as the dreadnought disintegrated around them. Ramos's eyes fluttered open, his head throbbing. Twisted metal and sparking wires surrounded him. He pushed himself up with a groan, wincing at the sharp pain in his ribs. Anyone alive? He called out, voice hoarse. Silence answered. He stumbled through the wreckage, searching. A faint moan caught his attention. Following the sound, he found General Zerg pinned under a fallen bulkhead. Look how the mighty have fallen. Ramos said, kneeling beside the Edosian. Zerg snarled weakly. Finish it, human! 
No, you're coming with me. Ramos yanked Zerg free and bound his hands. You're my ticket to ending this war. Back aboard the remnants of the Titan fleet, Ramos surveyed the damage. Gutted ships drifted lifelessly. The command deck was somber as casualty reports flooded in. Status? Ramos barked. Two-thirds of the fleet destroyed, sir, an officer replied. But Sagan's flagship is confirmed destroyed. The Adotian fleet is in chaos. Ramos nodded grimly. Broadcast on all Adotian frequencies. The comms officer complied. Ramos addressed the enemy fleet. This is Admiral Ramos. Your emperor is dead. Retreat immediately or face annihilation. He paused. And in case you need motivation... The camera panned to show Zerg, bound and glowering. You have one hour to comply. Some Edotian ships fled instantly. Others held their ground defiantly. An Edosian warlord's face filled the screen. This isn't over, human filth. We'll bathe in your blood. The transmission cut off. Ramos sighed. Prepare for further engagement. On Earth, crowds filled the streets. Cheers of victory mingled with sobs of grief. Ramos watched the scenes from orbit, his face grim. Sir, the Security Council is assembled, his aide reported. Ramos strode into the conference room, facing the gathered human leaders. We've bloodied their nose, but the Adotians aren't beaten, he said. We must press our advantage now, drive them from the entire system before they regroup. Protests erupted. The cost in lives uh, will be far greater if we hesitate, Ramos cut in. He outlined his strategy, a system-wide offensive to shatter Edosian resistance. Hours of debate followed, finally grudging agreement. Ramos wasted no time. He summoned his top officers. Captain King, take your stealth ships and cut their supply lines. Make them bleed. King nodded sharply. They won't know what hit them, sir. Commander Akachi, I need your best for hit-and-run attacks. Keep them off balance. Akachi grinned fiercely. My commandos are ready, Admiral. Colonel Graves, Ramos said. The super soldier program is yours. Use them wisely. Graves' eyes gleamed. Oh, I will. As the offensive launched, new intel arrived. Ramos stared at the report, his blood running cold. Confirm this, he ordered. Minutes later, grim confirmation came. The Adotians were conducting horrific experiments on human prisoners on Mars. Ramos clenched his fists. This was it, the final push. All ships, he commanded, set course for Mars. We end this now. Uh. The Titan fleet hung in the inky void of space, their hulls scarred and battered from the brutal assault on Mars. Admiral Ramos stood on the bridge of his flagship, his eyes fixed on the tactical display. The fall of Tartarus had been a decisive victory, but the cost had been steep. Admiral, high command is assembled and waiting, his aide reported. Ramos nodded and strode into the war room. The faces of Titan's top brass stared back at him from screens arrayed around the circular table. He took a deep breath and began. Ladies and gentlemen, we've dealt the Adotians a crippling blow, but they're far from beaten. Our latest intel paints a grim picture. He tapped a control and a holographic image of Jupiter's moon Io sprang to life above the table. The enemy has fortified Io, transforming it into a stronghold they're calling Infernum. It's not just a defensive position. They're building ships there. Murmurs of concern rippled through the assembled officers. If we don't act fast, they'll replenish their fleet and undo everything we've accomplished, Ramos continued. We need options. Captain King leaned forward, her face grim. Sir, we've reverse-engineered some of the Adotian stealth tech. My team could slip past their defenses, cause some havoc from the inside. Commander Akachi shook his head. Too risky. We should hit them hard and fast with everything we've got. The Spartans are itching for another fight. Ramos considered both proposals, his mind racing. Finally, he nodded. We'll do both. King, you'll lead the infiltration team. Akachi, prep your Spartans for a full-scale assault. We'll coordinate the attacks for maximum impact. Hours later, King's stealth ship sliced through Io's turbulent atmosphere, skimming just above the moon's sulfurous surface. 
Her team moved with practiced precision, their suits blending seamlessly with the volcanic landscape. Contact, two o'clock, her second-in-command whispered over the comm. King froze, watching as an Adoshan patrol stomped past, mere meters away. Once clear, they pressed on, reaching their first objective, a massive power distribution hub. Plant the virus, King ordered. Her tech specialist plugged a device into the alien computer, lines of code streaming across his visor. Across Io's pockmarked surface, similar scenes played out as King's infiltrators wormed their way deeper into Infernum's infrastructure. Meanwhile, high above, Akachi's Spartans rocketed towards the moon in sleek drop pods. The sky lit up with anti-aircraft fire, superheated plasma streaking past them. All units, weapons free, Akachi roared. The Spartans unleashed a barrage of Prometheum warheads, turning Io's gun emplacements into molten craters. As they punched through the atmosphere, King's viruses took effect. Infernum's defenses flickered and died. The Spartans hit the ground hard, led by their grizzled commander, Redford. He hefted his massive railgun, scanning the hellish landscape. Push for the shipyards, he bellowed. Don't let up! They fought their way through waves of Edosian defenders, plasma bolts sizzling past. Redford's armor was blackened and dented, but he pressed on relentlessly. As they neared the shipyards, a new threat emerged. Towering figures, easily twice the size of a normal Edosian, strode out to meet them. Their bodies pulsed with biomechanical augmentations, weapons sprouting from grotesquely enlarged limbs. Apex warriors, someone shouted. The two forces clashed in a maelstrom of violence. Spartan and Apex grappled amid half-constructed warships, trading blows that could shatter stone. Redford found himself locked in combat with an Apex commander their struggle carrying them to the edge of a lava-filled chasm. Inside Infernum's control center, King fought through the last of the Cyber Guardians. She reached the central console, her fingers flying over alien controls. This is it, she muttered. Antimatter reactor overload initiated. Alarms blared throughout the complex. King's team evacuated, but she stayed behind, ensuring the meltdown couldn't be stopped. Outside, Redford saw Infernum beginning to tear itself apart. His blood ran cold as he realized King was still inside. Without hesitation, he plunged back into the disintegrating base. Redford found King unconscious, pinned beneath fallen debris. He hefted her over his shoulder, sprinting through collapsing corridors as antimatter reactions consumed everything around them. They emerged just as Infernum vanished in a blinding flash. The shockwave sent them tumbling across Io's ruined surface, but they were alive. As the dust settled, Redford surveyed the utter destruction they'd wrought. Infernum was gone, along with the Adotians' hopes of quickly rebuilding their fleet. It was a decisive blow, but Redford knew the war was just the beginning. The remnants of the Titan fleet limped back from Io, their hulls still glowing from the aftermath of Infernum's destruction. Admiral Ramos stood on the bridge of his flagship, his eyes fixed on the tactical display. A sea of red blips filled the screen, emerging from the depths of the Kuiper belt. Confirm that reading, Ramos ordered, his voice tight. The sensor officer's fingers flew over his console. Confirmed, sir. Long-range scans show a massive Edosian armada. They're on a direct course for Earth. Ramos's teeth clenched. He'd hoped for more time to regroup after Infernum, but the enemy had other plans. Sound General Quarters, all ships to defensive formation Alpha. Alarms blared throughout the fleet as crews scrambled to battle stations. Ramos opened a channel to his top officers. Commander Akachi, get your Spartans planet side. I want key locations fortified yesterday. Akachi's face appeared on the screen, his eyes burning with intensity. We're Oscar Mike, Admiral. Those Adotian bastards won't set foot on Earth's soil. Captain Redford, Ramos continued, I need your Marines ready for rapid deployment. You'll be our fire brigade. Redford nodded grimly, his face still bearing the scars from Infernum. We'll be ready, sir. Just point us at the enemy. As Ramos issued orders, the Adotian vanguard struck. A blinding flash erupted across space, 
momentarily overwhelming sensors and communications. When the light faded, chaos reigned. Multiple impacts, the tactical officer shouted. We've lost contact with orbital platform Sierra through Echo. Ramos gripped the command rail, his squeezing hard. Status of Earth's defense grid? Severely degraded, sir. The photon missile barrage took out most of our early warning systems. Before Ramos could respond, new alarms blared. Sir, we've got multiple Edotian signatures approaching Mars. Ramos watched in horror as Edotian battle spheres descended on the Red Planet. With Tartarus in ruins and Earth under imminent threat, Mars's defenses were paper thin. The Edotians tore through them like tissue. They're reactivating the mass drivers, an officer reported, her voice filled with dread. Ramos' blood ran cold. He knew what was coming next. Moments later, the first railgun slugs slammed into Earth's atmosphere, lighting up the sky with fiery streaks. Impacts rocked cities across the globe, shattering buildings and cratering streets. Ramos surveyed the unfolding catastrophe, his mind racing. He had to act fast or humanity would be overwhelmed. All ships, new orders, he barked. We're splitting into three groups. First group, push for Mars. We need those mass drivers silenced. Second group, defend Earth's orbitals. Third group, prepare to intercept the main Edosian fleet. As the Titan forces redeployed, the battle erupted across the inner solar system. On Earth, Akachi's Spartans faced off against Edosian shock troops in the rubble-strewn streets of New Shanghai. The clash of titans echoed through shattered skyscrapers as augmented human warriors traded blows with alien invaders. In orbit, human battleships engaged Edosian spheres in a deadly dance. Energy beams lanced across the void, punching through hulls and igniting atmosphere. Debris fields grew, creating treacherous obstacle courses for both sides. But the true hell was on Mars. Redford's Marines, still bearing the scars of Tartarus, found themselves thrust back into that nightmare. They fought tooth and nail against Carvax's elite guard, trading fire amid the ruins of human outposts and alien fortifications. Redford himself led a desperate assault on one of the reactivated mass drivers. Plasma bolts sizzled past his head as he charged forward, his squad laying down covering fire. Take out those gunners, he roared, lobbing a grenade into an Edosian strongpoint. The explosion rocked the Martian soil, but more alien soldiers poured from their positions. Redford's Marines were slowly pushed back, the mass driver looming over them like a mockery of their efforts. Back on his flagship, Ramos watched the mounting casualties with growing despair. The Edosians were grinding them down on all fronts. He knew he needed a game changer. With grim tenacity, Ramos keyed in a secure command code. A small group of ships hidden among the Defender fleet received new orders. Led by the brilliant young Captain Keller, they prepared for a daring FTL jump. As the main battle raged, Keller's strike group vanished in a burst of tachyons, reappearing deep in the Kuiper belt behind Carvax's lines. Their mission, to strike at the Edosian supply lines, and turn the tide of this desperate battle for Earth. Captain Keller's strike force materialized in a burst of tachyons at the edge of the Kuiper Belt. The void around them teemed with Edosian supply ships, their hulls glinting in the dim starlight. All ships, weapons hot, Keller ordered, his voice steady despite the tension. Fire on my mark. The human vessels hung silently in space, their stealth systems masking their presence. On Keller's flagship, the weapons officer's hand hovered over the launch controls. Three, two, one, mark! Antimatter warheads streaked from the human ships, crossing the vast distances in seconds. The Edosian convoy never saw them coming. The first impacts lit up the darkness like newborn suns. Edosian ships vaporized instantly, leaving nothing but expanding clouds of superheated plasma. Those that survived the initial barrage found themselves engulfed in a storm of secondary explosions as their volatile cargo ignited. Keller watched the destruction unfold on his tactical display, his face illuminated by the strobing lights of detonations. Second volley, fire. 
Another wave of warheads lanced out, methodically eradicating what remained of Carvax's supply lines. When the carnage finally subsided, Keller's communications officer spoke up. Sir, we're receiving a priority transmission from Admiral Ramos. Keller nodded, turning to face the main view screen. Ramos's face appeared, his expression grim but determined. Excellent work, Captain, the Admiral said. Your success has given us the opening we need. All forces are to commence a full counteroffensive immediately. As Ramos's orders echoed across the system, the tide of battle shifted dramatically. On Earth, Commander Akachi rallied his Spartans. Warriors of Titan, our time has come. To Mars! Drop pods streaked through Earth's atmosphere, carrying Akachi's elite troops to waiting transports. As they rocketed towards the Red Planet, Akachi briefed his soldiers on the rapidly evolving situation. The Spartans hit Martian soil hard, their armor absorbing impacts that would shatter normal humans. They emerged from their landing sites to find chaos. Edosian forces, cut off from resupply and reeling from the sudden shift in momentum, struggled to mount an effective defense. Akachi led from the front, his power armor propelling him across the Martian landscape. Push forward. Don't let them regroup. Human weapons fire cut down Edosian soldiers by the dozens. Alien return fire was sporadic and uncoordinated. The Spartans tore through their lines like an unstoppable force, leaving broken Edosian war machines in their wake. As Akachi's forces punched deep into enemy territory, Captain Redford saw his chance. He gathered his recon marines, their faces etched with the scars of countless battles. This is it, boys. Redford growled. We're going after the big fish himself. Carvax ends today. They slipped past the crumbling Edosian defenses, using the chaos of battle as cover. Deep beneath the surface of Mars, they found Carvax's hidden bunker. Redford's demo expert made short work of the sealed entrance. The Marines stormed in, their weapons blazing. Alien guards fell before they could even raise the alarm. But as they pushed deeper into the complex, Redford's instincts screamed that something was wrong. His suspicions were confirmed when they breached the main control room. Carvax was there, but the Supreme Commander's tentacles danced over a console covered in pulsing red lights. You're too late, humans, Carvax's translator crackled. I deny you your prize. Alarms blared throughout the facility. Redford's tech specialist paled as he scanned the alien readouts. Sir, he's initiated a reactor overload. This whole place is going to go up and take half the planet with it. Redford opened a channel to orbital command. This is Captain Redford. Carvax has triggered some kind of doomsday device. We need immediate evac and... Uh, he was cut off by Admiral Ramos's voice, heavy with the weight of command. Negative, Captain. We can't risk Carvax escaping. I'm ordering an orbital strike on your position to contain the blast. I'm sorry. Redford absorbed the news, then turned to his men. Their faces showed grim acceptance. They all knew the stakes. Well, boys, Redford said, hefting his rifle. Looks like this is our last dance. Let's make it count. As Ramos's ships unleashed their devastating barrage, Redford's final transmission crackled through the static. Hey, Carvax, you thought you could take our world. Here's a little going-away present from Earth, you tentacled son of a... The bunker vanished in a blinding flash, taking Redford, his Marines, and Carvax with it. The resulting shockwave rocked Mars, but the planet itself was spared from total destruction. Aboard his flagship, Ramos closed his eyes for a moment honoring Redford's sacrifice. When he opened them again, they burned with renewed purpose. All ships, he commanded, his voice carrying across the entire human fleet. Form up on me. We're taking the fight to what's left of the Edosian forces. It's time to end this war. Admiral Ramos's eyes narrowed as he studied the tactical display. The remnants of Carvax's once mighty armada fled deeper into the Kuiper Belt, their engines straining to outrun the pursuing Titan forces. Captain Keller, Ramos barked into the comm, you have new orders. Intercept and harry that flotilla. Don't let them regroup. Aye, sir, Keller's voice crackled back. We'll give those bastards a taste of what they did to us at Infernum. Keller's strike force surged forward 
their engines blazing against the void. As they closed in on the Edosian stragglers, Keller's voice rang out across his ships. All vessels, execute attack pattern Epsilon, hit hard and fade fast. Human warships darted in and out of the Edosian formation, their weapons blazing. Plasma torpedoes and railgun rounds tore through alien hulls, leaving twisted metal and venting atmosphere in their wake. On the bridge of his flagship, Carvac snarled orders to his crew. Evasive maneuvers! Return fire! But the Supreme Commander's words rang hollow. His ships were battered, their crews exhausted. For every shot they fired, the humans answered with a punishing barrage. As Keller's forces continued their relentless assault, Admiral Ramos gathered the remaining strength of the Titan fleet. Commander Akachi stood at attention before him, his Spartan armor still bearing scorch marks from the battle for Mars. Commander, Ramos said, his voice low and intense, I need every Spartan you can muster. We're going after Carvax himself. Akachi nodded, his eyes gleaming with anticipation. My warriors are ready, Admiral. Just give the word. Ramos turned to his bridge crew. Set course for Keller's position. Prepare for emergency FTL jump. The vast human armada vanished in a burst of tachyons, leaving behind a scant few ships to guard Earth's scarred surface. Light years away, Carvax's battered fleet limped towards a desolate, frozen world. Captain Keller's voice rang out across the Titan comms. Admiral, they're making planetfall. Looks like they're attempting emergency repairs. Before Ramos could respond, proximity alarms blared. The main Titan fleet erupted into real space, weapons already charging. All ships, form up, Ramos commanded. Keller, status report. But Keller's response was drowned out by a cacophony of panicked voices. Sir, we've got multiple contacts emerging from the planet's surface. What the hell are those things? Through the view screens, Ramos watched in horror as swarms of twisted, mutated forms poured from hidden caverns. Their bodies were warped parodies of Edosian physiology, howling with feral rage as they charged towards both human and Edosian lines. It's a god's damn free-for-all down there, Keller's voice cut through the chaos. These mutants are tearing into everyone. Ramos's mind raced, assessing the rapidly deteriorating situation. Akachi, get your Spartans planet side now. We need to secure Carvax before this gets any worse. As drop pods streaked towards the surface, Ramos turned to his weapons officer. Target those Edosian ships. I want a perimeter established around their crash sites. The battle raged across the frozen wasteland. Human marines exchanged fire with Edosian warriors while fending off waves of shrieking mutants. Akachi's Spartans carved a path through the melee their augmented strength and advanced weaponry laying waste to anything in their path. Deep within the twisted wreckage of his flagship, Supreme Commander Carvax rallied his elite guard. Stand fast, he growled. We will not fall to these human vermin. But even as the words left his mouth, a thunderous explosion rocked the ship. Commander Vale and his team of Spartans breached the inner sanctum, their armor-piercing rounds cutting down Edosian defenders. What followed was a battle of titanic proportions. Vale's Spartans clashed with Carvax's juggernauts in a storm of gunfire, energy blades, and brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat. The confined space amplified every impact, turning the ship's corridors into a crucible of violence. Vale ducked under a swing from an Adotian's massive limb, his enhanced reflexes allowing him to sidestep the attack and unleash a point-blank burst from his rifle. The alien's chest exploded in a spray of ichor, but two more took its place. Push forward, Vale roared, his voice barely audible over the din of battle. We've got that bastard cornered. The Spartans surged forward, their relentless advance driving Carvax and his remaining guards back. But the Supreme Commander fought with the desperation of a cornered animal, his own cybernetic enhancements allowing him to match the human's blow for blow. Just as it seemed Vale's team might be overwhelmed, the ship rocked with a massive impact. Gouts of superheated plasma melted through the hull, vaporizing Edosian warriors and creating choke points that trapped Carvax's forces. Now, Vale shouted, hit them with everything we've got. The Spartans unleashed hell, 
their combined firepower cutting through the last of Carvax's defenses. As the smoke cleared, Vale stood over the fallen Supreme Commander, his armor dented and scorched, but his perseverance unbroken. Admiral Ramos, Vale's voice crackled over the comms. Carvax is down. I repeat, we have Carvax in custody. A ragged cheer went up across the Titan fleet. Ramos allowed himself a moment of grim satisfaction before issuing his next orders. All forces, secure that planetoid. I want every inch of it locked down tight. As the sounds of battle faded, replaced by the efficient movements of Titan troops securing their hard-won victory, Ramos knew the war was not nearly finished. But with Carvax captured and the Adotian leadership in disarray, humanity had struck a blow that would echo across the stars. The acrid stench of burned flesh and scorched metal hung heavy in the air as Admiral Ramos strode through the debris-strewn halls of the Titan flagship. His boots crunched over shattered display panels and twisted bulkheads, grim reminders of the price paid for their hard-won victory. He entered the war room, where haggard officers hunched over flickering holographic displays. Captain Keller looked up, his face etched with exhaustion. Admiral, we've compiled the latest intel. It's not pretty. Ramos leaned over the central hollow table, studying the red icons scattered across the Sol system map. Each one represented an Adotian holdout, a festering wound that threatened to undo all they had fought for. How many? Ramos asked, his voice low. At least two dozen major concentrations, Keller replied, plus countless smaller pockets. They're dug in deep, sir. The room fell silent as the implications sank in. Commander Vale, his armor still bearing the scars of recent combat, spoke first. We should hit them now, while they're disorganized. Wipe them out before they can regroup. Murmurs of agreement rippled through the assembled officers. Ramos held up a hand, silencing them. And how many more of our own will we lose in the process? He asked. How much more devastation will our worlds endure? Vale's eyes flashed with anger. With respect, sir, they started this. We can't show weakness now. Ramos turned to Commander Akachi, who stood silently in the corner. Your thoughts, Commander? Akachi stepped forward, his movements measured. A protracted guerrilla war could drag on for years, bleeding us dry, but there may be another way. The Spartan activated a comm channel, and a holographic representation of the captured Supreme Commander Carvax materialized above the table. The alien's tentacles writhed in impotent fury. Use him, Akachi said. Offer the remaining Adotians a chance to leave. It's more than they gave us. Heated debate erupted. Officers shouted over each other their faces contorted with rage and pain. Ramos let it continue for several minutes before thumping his hand on the table. Enough, he roared. The room fell silent once more. We didn't fight this war just to become like them. We'll make the offer. Vale opened his mouth to protest, but Ramos cut him off. That's an order, Commander. Hours later, Ramos stood before a bank of cameras his uniform crisp despite the weight that seemed to press down on his shoulders. He took a deep breath and began to speak. To all remaining Adotian forces in the Sol system, your invasion has failed. Your supreme commander is in our custody. You have one chance to avoid total annihilation. He laid out the terms. Immediate surrender, detention, and exile to the far reaches of space. As he spoke, Ramos could almost feel the collective intake of breath across human space, millions waiting to see if their tormentors would see reason. Days passed, then weeks. Slowly, reports began to trickle in. Edotian ships appearing over human worlds, weapons powered down, signaling their surrender. Ramos watched from the bridge of his flagship as the first prison arc departed, carrying thousands of subdued aliens into exile. But even as hope began to flicker, alarms blared across the fleet. Emergency transmissions flooded in from a dozen worlds. New Sydney is under attack. Biological weapons detected on Ganymede. Mars orbital station has gone dark. Ramos' face hardened as he absorbed the reports of slaughter and devastation. He turned to Vale, who stood ready, almost eager. 
You have new orders, Commander, Ramos said, his voice cold. Find the ones responsible. And this time, no mercy. Vale nodded, a predatory grin spreading across his face. With pleasure, sir. As Vale's strike teams deployed across the system, hunting down the Edosian diehards, Ramos gazed out at the stars. He had tried to hold on to their humanity, to rise above the brutality of their enemies. But in the end, survival demanded a price paid in blood. The war would end, but at what cost to their souls? You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.